pan on. Get that nice and hot. Sweet sound peppers go brilliantly well. There's the centre. Start off. It's almost like sort of peeling an orange. Go all the way around and down. Place the pepper down. Three finger rule. One finger in front, two behind. Pinky holding it down. Thumb holding it nice and flat. The flatter the vegetables, the more confident you are when you slice. So, red onion. Olive oil in. I'm going to saute them, which is just the chef's term for shallow frying on a high heat for maximum taste. Some salt and pepper. Add a tablespoon of sugar. Sugar helps to break down the peppers quicker, but caramelizes the onions. Push away and pull back. Push away and pull back. That's ready for the red wine vinegar. In. Smells incredible. It helps to stain the peppers as well. Look at the glaze now. You can see the sugar. It's worked, it's magic. Turn down the gas and add a couple of tablespoons of fresh extra virgin olive oil. Let them stew for two to three minutes. Now, I want to make the peppers nice and light and sort of sweet, aromatic. Just roll the basil, almost like a big cigar. Slice. Basil in and then literally cook it out for 30 seconds. I want them off. Beautiful. OK, pan back on. And now for the pork chops. I want to make sure they don't curl up in the pan. If they start curling up in the pan, they're going to cook unevenly. A few simple cuts through the rind means the chop stays flat and cooks evenly. Point the knife down. Flip through. Just season them beautifully. Nice large shards of pepper. Punch that through lightly. Guarantee that seasoning is going to stay there. Hot pan, a touch of garlic and a touch of thyme. And the garlic, take a couple of cloves. Don't peel it, don't chop it, just knife on. Crush it. Olive oil in. Just starting to smoke. Top of the chop, in. And lay away from me. Nice. Keep that heat in the pan. Put the garlic in there early. A nice fragrant bunch of thyme. See how the pork has stayed nice and flat. Turn that over. Look at that. Beautiful. I want a little bit of thyme underneath there. Start squeezing that garlic out. I want the flavour coming out. Butter in. Thin slices of butter. Tilt the pan and baste. So I'm sort of speeding up the cooking process. At the same time, I'm keeping the pork chop really nice and moist. And now look at the colour of that butter. It's almost like sort of a nut brown. Check the colour on the other side, beautiful. When they're that thick, three and a half to four minutes each side. 30 seconds from now, they're going to be medium, so I'm going to take them out and let them rest. The secret to perfectly moist pork chops is letting them rest almost as long as they're cooked in the pan. A nice spoon of these peppers. The basil smells incredible. Keep that garlic on there. Be generous with that vinaigrette for the peppers because it really is incredible. Do two things simple like that, pork and peppers, and your confidence is going to shoot through the roof. A stunning pork chop with sweet and sour peppers. For the pork and prawn balls, in a bowl, add pork mince. Then add finely chopped prawns. Diced ginger. And chopped chives. Season. And roll into ping pong sized balls. For the broth, heat fresh stock. And add star anise. Oyster sauce, soy sauce, and sliced ginger. Gently simmer. Fry the pork and prawn balls in a pan until golden. Then transfer to the bubbling broth. Add handfuls of spinach, then serve. Top with finely sliced spring onions. A gorgeous, healthy dish that uses great value ingredients with amazing results. Pork and prawn balls in aromatic broth, ready to eat in under 20 minutes. First off, get your roasting tray. Put the tray on the gas. 
pork ribs, 60% meat, and 35, 40% fat. Give them a really good season. Salt and pepper. The nice thing about this cut, they stay incredibly moist when they're on the bone. And the longer you cook them, the more delicious they become. You just push all that seasoning in. Make sure that tray's nice and hot. And I really want that nice sort of caramelization taking place on the pork. Ginger, place it down nice and firmly and slice. Garlic. And it's really important, before you add anything to those ribs, make sure you've got the color in the ribs first. Don't rush it. Turn them over. That's what I want. Right, ginger and garlic in. Spread it around on all those ribs to sort of roast the ginger and the garlic. Chili flakes. Chili flakes in. Next, Szechuan pepper. Citrusy, vibrant peppercorns. Incredible. In. Next, star anise. In. Some fresh honey. But look what's happening. The colour on the ribs is extraordinary. Soy sauce. Brings that little bit of sort of saltiness to it. Really generous with the soy sauce. Japanese vinegar. Two tablespoons of vinegar in. Rice wine. It gives it that nice sort of um, tartness to the ribs. If you can't find rice wine, a dry sherry is a great substitute. 300 ml. That takes out the heat of that Szechuan pepper, those dry chili flakes. Make sure they're all laid down like a nice, tight box of matches. Bring that up to the boil. Cooking is all about learning to develop your own likes and dislikes. So always keep tasting to make sure you're happy with a combination of flavors. Mm. It's lacking a little touch of vinegar. Well, that sharpness. Now think what's going on. The tartness, the heat, the caramel, the color on the ribs is amazing. I want a bit of a sort of oniony flavor. We'll put some spring onions in. Whilst these ribs are in the oven, the spring onions will sort of puree, but give a sharpness. The final taste of that pork in with my spring onions. In with my stock, 400 ml of stock. This is just a simple chicken stock. The stock just sits underneath the ribs. It absorbs into the rib, and the top of the rib glazes underneath the rib. That gets crispy and rich, and that's what makes the ribs nice and moist. Really important. Into the oven. Mm. Cook at 180 for 30 minutes. Then turn the ribs over and cook for a further 30 minutes. Now. Wow, they smell incredible. Each side has got that really nice, crispy, roasted edge. It becomes sticky and chewy and sweet, sour. The fat's disappeared and the pork just melts in your mouth. I want to take them to the next level. Gas back on. Now, shake the tray. And this is the sort of the way that we finish them in the restaurant. And for every minute they glaze in that tray, they just get to taste better and better. Now look at them. I'm so happy with those. Ribs done. Absolutely delicious now. But if you want, you can put them in the fridge and the flavor will keep developing. Then just reheat them when you want to serve. So, each rib has a nice slice of ginger on there. Wow, look at that. Delicious sticky ribs with an amazing marinade. My next easy dish using the versatile noodle is stir fried pork noodles. First, marinade pork mince in Shaoxing rice wine, a fortified Chinese wine, soy sauce, and sesame oil. Next, fried chopped ginger in hot olive oil and garlic. Next, add Szechuan peppercorns, which have a wonderful lemony flavor and gives a pleasant tingling sensation. Now, add your marinated pork mince and brown. If you want more seasoning, add extra soy sauce. Then add fiery chili bean paste and rice wine vinegar adding cooked egg noodles mixed together. Finally, top with chopped spring onion and toasted sesame seeds. 
packed with flavor and on the table in 15 minutes. Delicious stir-fried pork noodles.